Hello and welcome to Big Deal. I'm Nisha Poddar. Now, as the digital sector or the new age companies gain more prominence in the economies of the world, including India, there have been several legal tangles as the sector evolves at a fast pace. Now, raging debate across the world on issues of cannibalization, preferential practices, anti-competitive business, abuse of power, market dominance are some of those common uh, issues. Now, as regulators grapple to really evolve with this particular sector, informing the relevant laws to contain these issues. Now, the digital ecosystem operating in India have recently been stirred by the newly proposed competition law for the digital sector, which are ex ante, with meaning to prevent the anti-competitive conduct from occurring, as opposed to the current ex post um, framework under the Competition Act, which acts later. So preempting the future trajectory of this particular sector. Let's debate the requirement of a new law and also tie it in with the burning issue of app store friction on which uh, uh, the recent news has been that the Indian internet companies have been denied an interim relief by the Competition Commission. Joining me are lawyers Nawal Chopra and Dinu Muthappa. Investor Siddharth Pai and founder Lal Chand Bisu. We have a full house here to debate this very interesting topic. Uh, welcome to all of you. Now, to begin with, um, uh, Siddharth Pai, how has the investor community really seen this particular proposal? I think the investor community has actually been expecting something along these lines to come up as of now. There was a joint parliamentary uh, the committee report that came out earlier in the December of 22. Uh, if memory actually serves, we did actually we did actually articulate the government's view on this matter, and then this working committee group, which has seen this report postponed over multiple times, has finally issued its report recently. The investor committee, as you know, is slowly just understanding what this ends up actually entailing and how it ends up actually playing with the strategies that they have. Obviously, the SSD framework that comes in there as of now does have a dual criteria of India income as well as global income for that matter. Whether it becomes an or, whether it becomes an and, will end up actually playing a material role. In the kind of in the kind of portfolio construction that they end up actually doing, some of the early stage investors are actually happy with this because when they look at the when they look at the ex ante kind of regulation, then some of the friction that their companies end up actually facing for that matter may end up actually getting preempted from the government. Later stage companies have taken a more nuanced view. Later stage investors have taken a most nuanced view to better understand how this will end up actually playing with their portfolio. But I think the understanding from the investor communities is only a matter of time before. Uh, EU DMA, the Digital Market Act, end up actually coming into the country. But the question is, will this end up actually stifling? What is the fine line they're going to draw between stifling innovation, protecting not just the users and the customers of this, but also the companies who end up actually, uh, the companies and clients of these larger tech companies who end up playing in the marketplace. So not just the consumers of the apps, but the creators and manufacturers of the apps also need to end up actually getting their say as well as their needs they need to end up being considered as well. These tech companies may end up becoming utilities for that matter. There is a constant debate happening as to whether to treat them like private companies, treat them like utilities, figure that out. So I think these are evolving points to conversation which requires investor mm -hmm. participation also because asset allocators and investors have a material role to end up actually playing in this, which hopefully these kind of groups end up recognizing over time and as well. The investors are big stakeholders in our startup and digital ecosystem, Siddharth Pai. But let me uh, take you uh, to a founder view then. Beso, uh, being an aggrieved party in one of the biggest debates and friction uh, in the digital world right now with the Google billing issue, but on the other hand, uh, remember that you also come under the net of CCI as um, SSDE, uh, you know, uh, scope really widens in this particular new proposed law. How are you viewing it and what is the founder community really saying about this particular proposal? Uh, you are on mute, Bisu. Sorry. So uh, there is a lot of uh, things are going in founder community these days. Uh, so recently Google delisted like more than 100 companies in just like a uh, few hours. Uh, and like we in India like are very proud, uh, proudly saying that we, we India as a country should go like digitally India and everything. But in India, I think the gatekeeper is not <laughs> us, but somebody else. Google is the gatekeeper in India. Uh, 
uh, and they can decide any time that they can remove any app and they can keep any app. Like this is completely in their control. More than 90% people download app on Play Store today. Uh, so uh, the biggest thing uh, founders want is that the games should be fair. And I think this, like internet is so large and it is a necessary item for everybody. Uh, it should not be monopolized by a one player or two players. There should be a decent uh, playing game. So everyone is now like asking government to for to like interfere and uh, give some regulations here because we can't play a fair game without uh, government intervention here. Right. And uh, there is a lot of things where like Google is actually forcing us like just for one example, if I will say like today we are paying around 0.5% to 2% to these payment gateways, Google is asking us for like 30% of the revenue. Right. So it is completely unfair for our kind of players. All right. So unfair business practices that needs to be contained and you don't mind the government regulation on that. Now, Naval, from the legal point of view, I have two, uh, you know, points here. One, of course, is that is this over-regulation and overreach by the government to preempt some of the issues that may come up? But on the other side, like Bisu was mentioning, the monopoly uh, in any sector, even the brick and mortar old economy companies uh, sectors have a lot of monopolistic play. So why not regulate that? What's your view? Thanks, Nisha. Um, regulatory inefficiency caused by lack of staffing and training cannot and should not be the reason to add new laws. You know, in India, we've moved away from the license raj to a market-based economy, and that's resulted in our exponential growth, especially in the IT sector. Now, to shackle that sector with a shoot-first, ask-questions-later approach is just bad. It's backward. It reminds me of the MRTP days where big was bad. It's baseless because the CCI has the tools and the powers to cover everything that the proposed law covers. And it's bizarre because even under the proposed law, the CCI must first set the rules of the game and then enforce it. So I don't think this is the solution. Right. Uh, so you've made a form uh, your opinion and argument uh, against this. Now, uh, let me uh, go to Dinu then, who's been patiently waiting. Thanks for that, Dinu. But uh, adding you to this conversation after listening to all the points of views, what is what do you think um, in terms of your argument um, for this particular uh, you know law to really come in force? And here I would like to ask that some of the issues that have really cropped up, like with the Google billing issue, now SSDE, is supposed to have many restrictions under the new law. Will it be preventive in getting into these kind of frictions if this law was to be enacted? Sure. Thanks, Nisha. And uh, also on having the benefit of everyone's views, I think, you know, on a very broad principle, I think we can all agree that these companies are very valuable. They are drivers of innovation in the market. The problem is that when their size becomes too big, their conduct has a impact across all stakeholders. These digital markets in particular, like you said, are winner take all markets. They're unlike the traditional brick and mortar or physical markets. These markets have the nature of tipping in favor of the incumbent. And once you have an incumbent that enjoys a 90-90% monopolistic share of the market, then business stakeholders, like what Mr. Bissu pointed out, they are in they are adversely affected by unfair terms. You know, going back to the, your point that um, very recently interim relief was denied. Um, if you had these prescriptive rules in place, if you had fair rules in place, like this law and the surges, this law requires for fair, transparent and non-discriminatory dealing. If you had this law in place, one could argue that, you know, this conduct by Google would not have um, occurred to begin with. So in a way, and this is a this is not novel to India. This is a view being taken across all other jurisdictions. And so if these gatekeepers can apply, can comply with the law universally. Um, I don't see why it can't take place in our subcontinent. Okay, so you are saying many other, uh, you know, economies have done this. Now, well, quick view on uh, why, when other uh, countries are doing it, why not in India? 
Um, so I want to make two points here. The first in relation to Google itself. You know, as Bisu and Dinu both mentioned, there is a Google case which is currently uh, being looked at uh, both by the CCI and well as well as the NCLAT. Uh, just yesterday, interim relief was denied. Now, there is nothing in the new law or the proposed law which would change because Google today is bound by the same rules of fair conduct, fair pricing, non-discriminatory behavior, not leveraging its dominance in one market to enter into or protect another market. Now, just restating that law and restating it in the context of digital markets will not improve its enforcement. The enforcement will only be improved when you staff the commission appropriately. Today, we're in a situation where there are only 122 people within the commission. That number needs to be 10x. So um, the solution is not a new law. The solution is equipping our existing authority, which, by the way, has been doing a very, very good job despite its uh, limited resources. Right. Better. right. Now, as far as Europe is concerned, hmm. the motive in Europe and the drivers in Europe were completely different. Europe failed to keep pace with innovation of US tech companies, and therefore they found the need to regulate them. But let us not have a herd mentality. We have a faster process on paper. We have the ability to impose interim reliefs and commitments. We should do that. Right. We have a clear defined abuse of dominance regime. Let's use that more effectively. Right. Uh, so uh, basically, both of you are arguing really truth and nail as if it was a court argument. Uh, thanks, uh, Dinu and Naval for those perspectives. But let's hear from uh, Besu. Besu, what do you uh, take away from uh, the interim relief being denied and what's the way forward in this particular issue? Yeah, uh, so actually, uh, uh, we are going to the government for the interim relief because like there is a lot of confusion now. Uh, last year, CCI gave the verdict that, uh, and also fine to uh, also put a big fine to Google also, and they told Google that you can't push for your payment gateway and blah blah blah. Uh, but somehow Google figured out some other way. Uh, they are calling it UCB, user choice billing, uh, and we are not happy with UCB also because UCB also somehow is implying same thing because um, that they will charge fifteen percent to thirty percent. Uh, so we are fighting in CCI, so it is, they just denied for interim relief, but they are hearing the case. And I think we have solid uh, reasoning that uh, it should not, uh, like these monopoly laws should not apply in India. Otherwise, like a lot of early startups will not survive. Even not early startups, I will say, even big companies who are exist in India from last more than 20 years, they are also struggling with giving 50%, 15% of their revenue to the Google. Okay, so do you think that there is no level uh, playing field? Is that being compromised here, Bisu? Yes, I think there is like a lot of tactics uh, used by Google now. Uh, so one of the like one of the evil things I will uh, categorize it is done by Google is that they are playing divide and rule in the market. Uh, now, like today, they are providing same service to every app uh, on Play Store. Users can go and download the app and they can use the app. But they are selecting few players, like saying that you are a digital goods players and we will charge you. Even they are giving same service to everybody. So this is also like divide and rule and they are like first putting these few players and they want to kill these players. Then they will go to next set of the players like gaming companies and other companies. Then they will go to next set of the companies like uh, I will say Flipkart, uh, Zomato, Swiggy, and all these players. So, so I, I will say that there are a lot of uh, things that are going in the market. Uh, and like we, some of the companies today fighting, but I think this is a bigger fight for uh, India. Uh, okay. We need to, we need like fair game in the country. All right. So you've made it a Bharat versus uh, the global uh, players kind of a debate. Uh, so that by your word on that, uh, because uh, the investor community can be in a precarious position and uh, a lot of them could could be on both sides, invested on both sides whenever such uh, occurrences take place. 
No, they actually would be, which is why, which is why we're actually the investor community is actually just seeking clarity on this as of now, as well as where the lines end up end up actually getting drawn. So I think, look, even even on the entire, even even in the EU also for that matter, we're seeing large, uh, we're seeing a large amount of malicious compliance end up actually happening over there. And a number of these issues normally end up getting dragged on for 10, 15, 20 years before we end up actually seeing some sort of concrete steps end up actually coming in. And India, India as, a, as one of the speakers was actually saying previously, does end up having a, having a culture of non-enforcement, number one. And number two, also for that matter, the ability for the courts to end up actually delivering delivering a verdict or delivering justice within a time-barred manner does end up actually taking a significant amount of time. Now, during that particular uh, particular uh, uh, period, there is a lot more uncertainty, and that uncertainty is actually anathemic to capital formation as well as investments as well. Now, even with regard to the way this law has actually been structured as of now, if you look at any DDC company or, or, or any cap that actually uh, any app that relies on the app store for large amount of di distribution, the 30% tax over that will significantly end up actually denting valuations. And mind you, this is not just an India-specific phenomenon, it is something that's actually evolving across the entire world as well for that. So most of the investors have actually taken that taken that particular thing to account in terms of giving the valuations to these companies. The later stage, larger stage companies for that uh, investors for that matter, they will end up actually looking at some of the growth stage companies who may end up actually meeting some of these portfolios. The the revenue of about 4,000 4, odd crores is roughly about uh, this one is roughly about five hundred million dollars. Five hundred million dollars is actually the baseline revenue case for a company for a tech company looking to IPO. Now, nobody wants at some point in time, there's a sort of glass ceiling that's actually placed on the ability of the company to end up actually scaling and going for that matter. That will actually end up becoming a problem. If you look at the way the European laws have been regulated, the larger this this larger ambit is actually placed at a significantly higher threshold compared to what is actually being contemplated in, in uh, India as of now. Hmm. So the entire industry is actually collating its views. We are yes. actually trying to form a balance between early stage investors who would like to see their companies uh, enjoy a much higher valuation much lower cost was the later stage investors who don't want this to end up actually threatening the growth and prospects of their companies as they end up going forward. But like yes. I said, one understanding is that this will end up coming up, but hopefully the final form is something that can actually strike that fine balance and should not right. end up hurting one of the other. We can't be a nation of minnows. We need to be a nation that ends up actually being a broad banyan tree that encompasses all ranges of startups. All right. So very important points made there, uh, Sadat Pai. And the biggest takeaway is that this will come into force, but the final uh, you know, balance can be struck with a lot of industry recommendations. We'll talk about more about the changes, recommendations, feedback, and some of the more critical and legal points uh, on this discussion right after a very short break on Big Deal. Stay tuned.